Hello and good day to fellow classmates. So me, Ashikin and Alia Fatima will be presenting our text, which is Paper Towns by John Green. So Alia will explain about the summary and also the live interview of John Green. Hi everyone. Okay, so this is the summary of Paper Towns. So Paper Towns is a story of two best friends, young and introverted Quentin and bold and adventurous Margot. They have been living in the same neighborhood since they were kids. Until they are in high school, Margot is always up to something. She would climb up to Quentin's bedroom and invite him to explore the world with her, even if it is already late at night. One night, Quentin follows Margot, who is now the most popular girl in high school, as she recruits him to help her play mischievous pranks on her so-called friends and ex-boyfriend who betrayed her. That one night is so meaningful to Quentin as all the things that they do together in that night is the time where Quentin gets his epiphany that he is actually in love with her. Sadly, the day after, Margot suddenly disappears and she is nowhere to be found. Quentin tries to follow all the cryptic clues that Margot left behind with help from his friends as he becomes obsessive to find the girl who made him feel truly alive. Okay, so this is the biography of John Green. His full name is John Michael Green. He was born on August 24th on 1977 in Indianapolis, Indiana, United States. So he got his education at Lake Highland Preparatory School, Glen Ridge Middle School, Indian Spring School, and lastly at Canyon College, which he got his double degree in English and also religious studies. So John Green has a brother named Hank Green. They made video blogs and educational videos on YouTube together. So Block, Block Brothers have been viewed for more than 800 million times, while the educational YouTube channel named Crash Course has over 10.7 million subscribers, which also have 1.2 billion views. John Green's book are Looking for Alaska, which is his first novel, An Abundance of Catherine's, Paper Towns, which, the, uh, which is the text that we are doing, Will Grayson, Will Grayson, The Fault, the Fault in Our Stars, which, which are also the uh, movie adaptation and Turtles All the Way Down and the Anthropocene Review. The books that already got into the movie adaptations are Paper Towns and The Fall in Our Stars, while Looking for Alaska is an eight episode limited series adaptation. So, this is uh, our online interview with John Green from the video What Are Paper Towns? So, in this video, uh, John Green is talking about what is the actual meaning of the phrase paper towns. So, according to him, in the books, it means different things to Q. Quentin, the narrator, at different points in the story. But actually, in real life, the phrase paper towns is about copyright. No, Hank, the phrase paper towns is about copyright. Like, map makers create fictitious entries in their map to make sure that no one else is copying them. Like, if you put my fake place on your map, I know that you've stolen from me. Every map so map makers create fictitious entries in their map to ensure that no one will copy them. For instance, if a person inserts a fake place in a map, the map maker will know that the person is actually stealing the information from the one who actually created the maps. Example that John Green used in Paper Town is Eglo, New York. The second online interview is the video entitled Paper Towns of the John Green Behind the Screens Movie Interview. So the duration of that video is around six minutes. And in this video, John Green talks about how he found the inspirations of writing Paper Towns. John writes Paper Town because he thinks a lot about how difficult it is to imagine other complexity, like how often we think of other people as merely stupid or merely smart or merely lame, when in fact, no one is actually merely anything. So John also mentions how Walt Whitman famously wrote that people contain multitudes, which means people are actually, that's not uh, merely just one thing, like how John Green said earlier. So Sean expresses that in a boy-girl romantic relationship, it can be really destructive if one fails to understand the other complexity. Um, and I was thinking about how in a boy-girl relationship, a romantic relationship, uh, that can be really destructive, that failure to understand the other complexly. Um, and that's really where Paper Towns got its start for me. But Lastly, John also reveals that he wants Paper Towns to be about friendship, about love, about all kind of loves that are available to human beings, not just romantic love, but the love uh, between families and also between friends. So the other things that John Green talks in this interview is that he talks about the character of Quentin. Quentin is actually a kid who is always anxious, is very focused on his future. In the interview, John confesses how Quentin actually reflects himself a little bit in some ways, but many of his friends are more like Quentin back in high school. Q is a very anxious kid who is very focused on the future. Um, and I was like that in some ways, but 
more my best friend in high school was like that and it was infuriating to me because I was always like let's go out and do something fun because John Francis used to be very serious about getting into universities such as Stanford University and all of John's friends wants to be doctors while John is actually the one who encouraged him to go out and have fun and have a break the point is John wants to point out that there was always a tension between do we live for now or do we live for the future and due to that, he makes Quentin uh, as someone who is, at least in the beginning of the story, is certainly living uh, entirely for his future. And the next thing that John Green talks in the interview is that on how people perceive Margot. John acknowledges that there's an excitement to imagining a kind of life which people think Margot have the glamorous life where people, uh, where everybody in the school knows her. But the reality of it, according to John, is that it is always different from how people expect. Uh, from it to be. So John also adds that there is always a disconnect between the way people imagine something and the way people actually experience it. There's an excitement to that kind of life and I think there's an excitement to imagining that kind of life but then the reality of it is always different um, from your expectations of it. That's true of anything. Like there's always a disconnect between the way we imagine something and the way that we actually experience it. it so. so in Paper Towns, the way Quentin looks at Margot is very different from how Margot actually is. John also clarifies that Margot's last name is Spiegelman, which in German means um, mirror maker. Margot is actually very much like that. She is a mirror maker because whenever people see Margot, they actually see themselves. In the end, they, they doesn't see much about Margot. John elucidates that this is exasperating for Margot because she has to live that such difficult life. Uh, the symbolism will be explained by Ashiki. All right, so the first symbolism is strings. Now, the strings in this story symbolize connections and relationships in lives, as well as its relations to the mental state of persons. So, for example, uh, in Cher Margot said uh, in page 13, she said that maybe all the strings inside him broke. So she was actually referring to a guy named Robert Jarner who killed himself because he was facing a divorce at the time. So he was sad about his divorce and decided to commit suicide so this scene is present in the film at um, three minutes 20 seconds until 30 27 seconds when margo and quentin was still uh, were still children but the thing is the film actually does not capture the true essence of this symbolism so this the strings is actually very important um, because it signifies Margot's disappearance it helps to explain why margo decided to uh, leave the town. So, uh, you know, um, because uh, when we're talking about connections and relationships, it can affect our well-beings. And these relationships sometimes can be wanted or unwanted. So to Margot, her friends are her only strings in the town. But then when her friends betray her, her boyfriend betray her, these strings become something that is detrimental to her well-being. And she thinks that cutting them off is the best solution. So in, sure, in this passage, you could see that uh, Margot said that um, uh, she hates herself for caring about her friends. And she did say that about Lacey, her best friend, which was her last string. She said, that, but it was the last string. It was a lame string for sure, but it was the one I had left for. And every paper girl needs at least one string, right? So she was telling Quentin about what she's feeling about um, these connections that she has in her life. And then because the film doesn't show this, so it actually doesn't give a uh, doesn't justify Margot characters, uh, give her the in-depth that she needs to show that she's actually struggling with her life. So these strings um, has different kind of uh, perspectives because to Margot, it is something that is dangerous and detrimental, but to Quentin, the strings are what keep people together and grounded in lives. So that's why he tries to be the string to Margot so that she can continue living and be connected with him and the town. So um, this is his monologue when he was uh, trying to find Margot. He wanted, he wanted to tell her that when they united, the pleasure was in seeing our stream cross and separate and then come back together. But then when they finally reunited and he learns about the reason for Margot's disappearance, um, Quentin still believes that these strings are not as bad as they seem to be. Uh, that's why he tells Margot that I like the strings I always have because that is how it feels. But the string makes things seem more fatal than it is, I think. We are not as frail as the string would make us believe. So there's a difference between how Margot and Quentin view uh, the symbols of strings. 
the next symbolism is about paper. Um, so the title itself is Paper Towns, and Alia has explained that Paper Town is just a fake location on maps, but it is actually important for copyrights. So the concept of paper in this story symbolizes the fake identity or representations of someone or something that is often portrayed more than what it is, seems or is meant to be. So Margot, she has a cynical view in life where she sees everything as made of paper. So in sheer Margot is describing to Quentin about the town. She said, you see how fake it all is? It's not even hard enough to be made out of plastics. It is a paper town. And then down there, she said, everyone demented with the mania of owning things, all the things, paper tin and paper frill. So this thing can be found in the film at 25 minutes, 18 seconds until 43 seconds. And here is a little bit of uh, screenshots of the scene. So what Margot is saying is that um, the town, because... <laughs> The town may seem appears, uh, may seems as perfect, but it actually isn't because with how the people they are living, they care about their appearances and their materialistics. So that's why it is something that is flimsy and fake. So Margot also admits that she is a paper girl because um, everyone views her as someone cool who has everything despite that is not who she really is. So when Quintins finally meets her. Uh, Margot tells Quintins that I was made of paper. I was the fun and foldable person, not everyone else. And here's the thing about it. People love the idea of a paper girl. They always have. And the worst thing is that I love it too. I cultivated it, you know. So this is why, this is part of the reason why Margot disappeared because uh, she has, uh, because everyone has a false identity representations of herself and she no longer knows who she really is. So that's why she goes to the paper towns where paper creation becomes real because she thought that perhaps this is where she could finally become herself, a fresh start. So the correspondence scenes can be found at um, one hour, 34 minutes and four seconds until 38 seconds. So here's um, Margot is telling Quentin that people have always looked at me and seen what they wanted to see, which including Quentin himself also, because Quentin views Margot as um, a crush that uh, he can never attain. And that's actually is a false representation of Margot. Now, imagery. So, um, the function of imagery is to give a vivid image of the scenes and also help us to understand the mood and the tone of the uh, story. Uh, we take two examples, which, which is the first one is called Crash. So here in this passage, you can see that um, John Green used a lot of words like flawless is white, a great white wall of cow, vast expanse of snowy fur, and hit this white wall. So there is a lot of... Uh, words that describe the color of white. So why? Because this helped to give a mental image of the near-death experience for Quentin and his friends. Because, you know, white is often associated with dying, with death, like heaven, stuff like that. So this is occurred at 1 hour 15 minutes, 12 seconds to 25 seconds. In here, you could see that this is Quentin, and there's the cows, and next to Quentin is Ben. So he's the one who saved them because... Uh, when the cars start to crashing, Quintins actually become frozen in fear and Ben is the one that steer the wheels at the last minute. So the next imagery is Orlando, the town itself where Margo and Quintin lives. So uh, this town is actually um, the first half of the setting of the story. So John Green actually described it in details throughout the story, but then this clear descriptions are a way to show the difference between perspectives. So in this passage, uh, it is from Quentin's perspectives and he used, these, used most words to describe the town as uh, pretty well lit beneath us. I could see the flashing downward signs at intersections and the street lights running up and down in the city in a perfect grid. It's beautiful. So to Quentin, the town is something beautiful, something imperfect and bright. And that's why he is okay with staying in there until he decides to further his study. But then 
to Margot, the town is actually flimsy. It's something ugly because here uh, she tells Quintins that here is one not beautiful body. From here, um, here because they are actually standing in a tall building and they were looking at the whole town as a small, small buildings and lights. So uh, he tells Quintins that you can't see the rust or the cracked paint or whatever, but you can tell what the place really is. You see how fake it all is? It's not even hard enough to be made of plastics. It is paper town. And, and she says that all the houses that were built to fall apart. So this scene occurs at 24 minutes, 53 seconds, until 25 minutes and 42 seconds. So in here, um, it shows the contradictions of how to Margot's this town is actually ugly and flimsy, and she doesn't want to stay in there anymore. So it's not trying to prove which um, image is the correct one. It's just uh, trying to show how the same place, uh, the same thing, could have a different kind of perspective depending on how the person herself viewed it. So here's the screenshots of that thing. You can see that. So Quentin is telling Margot it's beautiful. And then Margot was like, you know, it's sarcastic lips, like everything is ugly up close. So, and then she describes about the house, about you being paper and everything. So yeah, that's all from us. Thank you.